Right now, um, I want to bring oxidation and reduction to a conclusion today. Um, I, I just want you to see this structure for a moment, that each of these, it's very important you complete a section, that you don't end up with two thirds of it or three quarters of it done, you'll be compromised in the questions. You must do everything there, and I'm going to add a number eight to it very shortly. I'd ask you to be aware of that just in what you're doing. I'm uh, going to do one last question on balancing equations for you, and I'd like to think that you know, you'd be in a position to work with that. There won't be really any great difficulty with it, other than I want to see are you ready to proceed any further with what we're doing? We'll have a look at this now and just see how it turns out, okay? So I'm going to write an equation on the board and I'm asking you to balance it, okay? You don't have it in any documentation now, but just take this down, please. H plus ions plus MN2O3 plus I minus goes to MN2 plus plus iodine plus H2O. And please, at the risk of sounding very smart, it would be nice if you took it down correctly. H plus MNO, MN2O3, I minus MN2 plus I2 and that, okay? Now they ask you various things about it. Show that this is an oxidation reduction reaction. How would you do that? You'd assign oxidation numbers to everything there, and you'd see there was a change in oxidation number for two, one being oxidized and the other being reduced, and that would be shown as oxidation reduction. Identify the species oxidized and the species reduced. We'd be doing that anyway. And then balance the equation is the reason I'm bringing this to your attention now, because it's very important, all right? So watch me go to work on this now. It's important that you be in a position to deal with it. Um, it's nice probably to write the numbers in a different color. That's a simple ion, it's plus one. That's minus two, three times. Be careful. So the manganese must be um, minus six, that must be plus six. So it's plus three each. Do you remember I've told you in a previous video that you must have a sign for every oxidation number, except zero, of course, right? That you must have a sign, very important. Could you name that compound now, I wonder? That compound there, it's manganese oxide, but there's a number of them there because that's a transition metal. It's called manganese three oxide because the oxidation number is three, okay? Manganese three oxide. If it was manganese two oxide, that's what you'd have because that's minus two and that would be plus two. That'd be manganese two oxide. That's manganese three oxide. Okay, very important that you are aware of that and you can work that out any time with that. Next, that's a simple ion. That's a simple ion. That's a free element. That's minus two and that's plus one twice. Okay, um, there are your oxidation numbers. Identify what's oxidized and reduced. Starting from the left, um, plus one, plus one. Next, plus two and, sorry, plus three and plus two. There's one. Plus three and plus two. That happens to be a decrease. So that's reduction. And reduction is a gain. And it's a gain of a single electron from three to two. Oxygen is next, minus two, minus two, no change, and iodine. I see the iodine here is minus one, very good, and the iodine here is naught. Minus one to naught is an increase, that's oxidation. Oxidation is a loss, and it's a loss of one electron. Okay, and that's okay so far. So you've shown it is a redox reaction. You'd make a statement now, be very careful, that the manganese three oxide has been reduced and the iodide, be careful now you don't say iodine, it's I minus, and the iodide has been oxidized. Okay, so you've answered the first part of that. Now it's important when you're looking at these questions that you kind of build up experience, that you can transfer that learning into other questions and it's usually done very successfully once you get to there, okay? Now the balancing it is the trick I want to get into because I think you may have issues with it. Before I leave that, what is the oxidizing agent? And what is the reducing agent? And I hope you're responding by saying the oxidizing agent is always reduced. So that's the oxidizing agent. And the reducing agent is always oxidized. So that's the uh, reducing agent. 
the reducing agent be careful you don't say iodine there now that's the iodide ion the i minus iodine is over here that's iodide okay very good and that you're going to i'm going to show you those reagents in a moment they're very important that you see what you're at there now balancing that equation is the reason i'm bringing this to your attention because there's lots of tricks in it so you know the rules for balancing an equation assign oxidation numbers to everything identify what is oxidized and reduced that is reduced that is oxidized and balance the electron transfer this one is gaining one electron this one is losing one electron so it's balanced already for you very good Next, balance the remaining atoms by inspection, starting from the left. Okay, the remaining atoms by inspection, starting from the left. Leave hydrogen to last, you remember my rule. Two manganese here, so put two manganese in there. Now please, um, you'll need to go back on this again. I'm going to do some things here to lead you on a bit. Two manganese are correct. Next, leave oxygen to last. Next, iodide. There's a, one iodine there, there's two there. So you put a two in there and the iodine is balanced okay now as it happens um no and then the hydrogens and oxygens last you have one hydrogen there leave it to last three oxygens there put a three in here put a three in here and a six in there now i've made a serious mistake i wonder do you see it i've made a serious mistake okay be careful with this now you balance the electron transfers one to one i'm just after tampering with it there you're not allowed to do that. I'm going to go back on that again. Get rid of that too. Very good. Okay, so we have two manganese here, two manganese here. Very good. We skip the oxygen. One iodine here, two iodines here. Putting a two in there, you can't put a two in there because you'll upset the electron balance. If you put a two in there, you'll have to put a two in there. Don't touch them. Okay, one iodine here, two iodine here. Here's how you deal with it. Put a half in there. One iodine, one iodine, very good. Excellent. Now balance the remaining atoms by inspection. Leave hydrogen to last. You have three oxygens here, so put a three in there. Good. And the oxygens are balanced, and then you have six hydrogens. Put six in there, and you're doing very well. And that's fine. If you don't like halves when you're finished, you could multiply the entire lot by two. Now, can I give you a tip then? Whenever this happens and the ratio is one to one, you can't tamper with that ratio anymore once you've balanced the electron transfer. An idea might be to put a reminder up there for yourself that that is one to one. You can't tamper with that. When I got to wide in here, two iodines here, one iodine here, the temptation is to put two in there. Now, the year that came up in exams, very few got that right. Now, don't fault. The rules are simple. You must do them in sequence. Balance the electrons first and then balance the remaining atoms by inspection. But if you're going to upset the electron transfer, you're undoing the last step. So that's very important. So that's your balanced equation. And there's really no issue with that. Now, do you think you're OK with that? Do you think you can complete that? I hope you can, because that's um, that is an example of what you need. Now, next, I'm going to go on to number seven in this. Number seven. Okay, the laboratory test for oxidizing agents and reducing agents. And they are in your notes. You will get them at the bottom of page three and the top of, bottom of page two and the top of page three. Okay, and these are the two of them. I'm just I'll do them one at a time to give you some idea. Now, no more than any other tests on your course. There are tests on your course. I think you were telling me in class that you haven't some of these done, but there are five tests. The test for chlorides, you have to test for carbonates and hydrogen carbonates. You have to test for nitrates, you have to test for sulfates and sulfites, and you have to test for phosphates. Now, I appreciate some of them aren't done. I understand that, okay? They will be done in due course, but they're not done at this stage. These are two additional ones then. How would you test or how would you show that something was an oxidizing agent? It's really very simple. I'm just going to demonstrate this for you. It won't take a moment, and I'll just show you what's involved. If you take some potassium iodide, Ki, potassium iodide, okay? Um, now I wonder, do I need to get rid of this first? You don't need any of this. <clears throat> now, I'm going to basically take some potassium iodide and we'll go through that, okay? And we'll just get something on that. This is potassium iodide. It's a colorless liquid. Ki, potassium iodide. I'm putting it into a large test tube now. I don't want to use a small test tube so you can see it. And I'm going to acidify it. And when you acidify it, you nearly always use sulfuric acid. 
this is dilute sulfuric acid so a little dilute sulfuric acid and you have the reagent you want okay that's the testing reagent what's it called it's called acidified potassium iodide okay potassium iodide with some dilute sulfuric acid now if you add any oxidizing agent to that any oxidizing agent watch me a moment please ki if you add any oxidizing agent to that you're going to get iodine now that is colorless and this is brown a dark brown okay and ultimately that's what you're after there with that nothing more than that right i'll come back in a moment now, but that's it i have some bleach here bleach is an excellent oxidizing agent okay um, and um, it kills bacteria and this is bleach you'll be using that later in volumetric analysis okay uh, but is this an oxidizing agent if it is if this is oxidizing that'll turn brown and here we go take a look at that and there you go no doubt about that that's an oxidizing agent yeah that's it okay and it goes brown in color and that's exactly what you want if it stays colorless it is not an oxidizing agent it's as simple as that so what do you need to know you need to know the recipe you have to learn this now if i want to test an oxidizing agent i need acidified potassium iodide it's a colorless mixture and if it turns brown it's an oxidizing agent if it doesn't it isn't and um, you'll discover later if you wanted to prove that you could pop a little starch in that to go blue black but that's another part of your course okay neither here nor there but that's it and that's that one and that's that one done there's no problem with that let me just show you then for a moment assign oxidation numbers to this that is plus one that's minus one a halogen that's not minus one to naught minus one to naught is an increase that's oxidation what would you need to oxidize you need an oxidizing agent of course and that's exactly it put any oxidizing agent into acidified ki and that will happen you need the acidification to make sure everything reacts fully okay that's important don't worry about it but you just but you learn that now i'm seldom telling you to go away and learn something you just literally need to know the recipe here you either can test for an oxidizing agent or you can't and there's the testing reagent there's nothing else to it that's one let me do the second one for you then test for a reducing agent okay to test for a reducing agent i'm going to do that for you now test for reducing it to test for reducing agent then what you take is acidified kmno4 the compound is called potassium manganese 7 kmno4 if i put oxidation numbers on that that would be minus two four times that would be plus one so that would be plus seven potassium manganese 7 potassium manganate 7 is the name of that okay and to go to mno2 and that's very important like that we have that okay potassium manganate 7 kmno4 right and it's a purple color i have it here okay i have it here as a solution and i'm going to use it in a moment here and it needs to be acidified so you take this particular compound mno4 i'm just using the iron for it and it will go to mn2 plus okay that's purple and that's colorless and there you go so that's exactly what you do to do this test you take some of this kmno4 which is a purple solution okay just a little of it um there you are and um, i'm going to dilute it down a bit so that we will get get um, a color change immediately for you all right and i'm going to acidify that as well acidified kmno4 is the test reagent you want i'm putting some sulfuric acid in there okay and there you have a purple color now i am going to take a reagent here now you'll have to take my word for this i made it up in advance this is sodium sulfite okay and i think it is a reducing agent if it is a reducing agent that should go colorless okay that should go colorless okay and that's very important you do that let me just dispose of a little of that please let me just dispose of a little of it yeah i want to water it down just a little bit because i don't want to be using too much solution but there you go there's your purple reagent okay and i'm going to add in this if this is a reducing agent that should go colorless and there you go it does right that goes colorless so that is a reducing agent i'll talk to you about that again in a moment but that's very important so it goes from purple to colorless again that there is minus two four times so that there is plus seven so it's called man potassium manganate seven okay where manganese is seven and that that's seven okay and this is a simple line is plus two plus seven to plus two is reduction 
What would you need for reduction? You need a reducing agent. Very good. And that any reducing agent will convert the purple into colourless. And that's it. Now, please, I don't want you feeling that you don't understand this or that you know there's an aspect of this that isn't clear to you. The reason it's not clear to you is because no one has explained it to you. Because that's not on your syllabus. You're asked, how would you test for an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent? You simply need to know the reagent you use, the testing reagents, and what you will see happening. It's a bit like a recipe. Okay, if you're asked to make flaky pastry, there's a recipe for it. You need to know the stuff, you need the ingredients, and you need to know what to do with them. It's exactly the same here. No one has offered you an explanation, but I'm trying to justify what's happened, that the oxidation numbers tell you that that was reduced, so any reducing agent will bring that about. If it remained purple, it's not a reducing agent, is the whole idea. And that's exactly what you want, and that's a test in its own right for that, okay? Now, that brings that particular part of this work uh, to a conclusion. I've, at the bottom here now, let me show you again, please, for a moment, so you can see what's happening here. I've poured the reducing agent into this, and it goes colourless, right? They're all examples of reducing agents. Some of them now, don't worry about them. That's an iron two salt. That's the stuff I used. That's sodium sulphite sodium sulfite. That's on your course, by the way, as a test, but don't worry about that. You may not have it done at this stage. That's sodium thiosulfate. You're going to hear a lot about that. Sodium thiosulfate. And that's oxalic acid. Okay? Uh, ethane dioxide. acid. Don't worry about it now. Would you be expecting all them? No, no, no. They could be, you could be given anything, any suit. I wonder, is that a reducing agent? And your answer that would be, hang on a while, and I'll test for it. And so you make up acidified chemino 4, pour the unknown into it, and if it goes colourless, yes, it is a reducing agent. If it stays purple, it's not. It's, it's as black and white as that now. You don't need any intermediate or any qualification or explanation. You either have it or you haven't. And that's what it's about. And that's it more than anything else. Now, I want you to look at the study plan for a moment because I'll be asking you in the next video, I'll be asking you to add one to the bottom of it. Take a look at that now, please, and take a look at what we have here. That's everything on oxidation and reduction. Right down to the very end, let me raise it up for you. Down to the very end, number seven, laboratory test for oxidizing and reducing agents. All you need to remember there now is acidified potassium iodide is what's used for that. And the other one, reducing agent, acidified KMNO4. Okay, that's what you need. I'll be asking you to add uh, a number eight in the next video. All right, good.